our everlasting love for you, mighty God. Come and have your way this night. We have come into your presence. Father, let your power flow tonight. Let your strength flow tonight. Father, there is nothing that we can do without you. But with you, we can do all things, mighty Father. Touch us again. Reveal yourself to us again. Father, we need the power of your presence again. Let your anointing flow, Papa. Oh, Jesus. Sanctify us, O oh Lord, by the power of your word. Let the atmosphere carry the anointing of grace. Father, O oh Lord, let the climate, the spiritual climate begin to change. The hour has come. The hour of grace has come. Father, fill us with the Holy Ghost and power. There is nothing that we can do on our own, Holy Father. But with you, we can do all things. Father, we thank you. Oh, Jesus, forgive all the sins we have committed, knowingly or unknowingly. Father, thank you. Blessed be your name, Lord. We cover the instruments you are going to use tonight with the blood of Jesus. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Jesus. We are inviting all the angels and saints of the Most High God to come and be with us in this night's nice prayer. Let the fire of God begin to charge the atmosphere in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed be your name. Thank you for forgiving us our sins. Thank you, mighty Father. Father, I cannot minister on my own. But Lord, let you take over and be the one to minister. Lay your hands upon your son. Let him flow according to the mandate of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that through tonight's prayer, let the satanic strongholds be pulled down completely. Evil altars, let them be pulled down completely. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. And amen. My dear friends, I have the pleasure tonight to welcome us to the house of Jesus and Mary Ministries. Today marks also the 13th day of our journey with the Lord. This is day 13. And in this part two, of the series, Summon That Tyrant. The 13th part two of Summon That Tyrant. The Lord is talking to us never to lose courage, but to use the power that he has given to us to summon the tyrants and to mess them up, to destroy them. Not to weaken them, but to destroy them. When the Lord fights, he destroys the enemies. The Lord does not scratch them. He does not wound them. He destroys them. So when the child of God is praying, he must do likewise. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Friends, we are going to take our reading from 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 18. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 18. And I'm going to read from the New Revised Standard Version Catholic Edition. Amen. As the enemy came down towards him. Elisha prayed to the Lord, saying, strike this enemy with blindness. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus. 
Friends in Christ. Elisha found himself surrounded by the enemies that were fully out to destroy him. They planned to terminate the life of the prophet of God before his time. But the prophet of God had his peace because he knew that the God he was serving does not sleep. That that God who is the creator of heaven and earth and who called him into prophetic ministry would protect him, can never abandon him, no matter the plans set up by the kingdom of darkness. But friends, what a faith. What a faith we also call to exhibit in our Christian journey. We ought to pray with the faith like Elisha. Who knew that his God would never abandon him? And when the enemies surrounded him, and they were just a soon throw from attacking him, and of course, in the mouth of the enemies, they thought that they had already cemented the deal, that they had gotten the prophet to destroy him. Just a stone throw away, the prophet released a, a weapon of prophetic release. I said, may the Lord strike you with blindness. And all of them went blind. There is great power in the word of God. When you have a relationship with Jesus, the word you speak is no more your word. It is the word of God that carries power. So the prophet said, may the Lord strike you and your armies with the blindness. And so they were blind. Someone the tyrants to the altar of blindness. Someone the tyrants to the altar of their destruction. No matter their headquarters, where it is located, once we call on God, God will mess the powers of the enemies. He will mess them up. So having said this, my friends, our prayer tonight is going to bring an end to the series, Someone That Tyrants. Praise the Lord. Someone That Tyrants. So we are going to look at the prayer point number 10, page 101. Remember that we're using the book, The Invisible War, Volume 2, by Brother Wakwe Chuku. And with our prayer point number 10, we are invited to pray in the name of Jesus, not in the name of man, because there is no power in man anywhere. But when we pray in the name of Jesus, great things will begin to happen. And so in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command all wandering messengers of the satanic kingdom that want to alter the effectiveness of this prayer. I command them to be paralyzed and be frozen to stillness. I command them to be paralyzed. I command them to be frozen to stillness. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Let them be frozen. Never to move again. As the wife of Lord was frozen into a pillar of salt. So we command all the satanic authors to be frozen now. Let their messengers be frozen. Let their evil priests be frozen. Be frozen to stillness. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Holy Spirit, take over. Mighty God, take over. 
Maya Sakayaba. Let them be frozen. Let them be frozen. By the power that's in the name of Jesus. Let them be frozen. Let them be frozen. Father, freeze them. Freeze them, Holy Father. In the name of Jesus. And that brings us to prayer point number 11. We begin to pray right now and against all the communication devices used by the messengers of Satan. Any of their devices that have been used against you or against this prayer meeting, we cancel right now in the name of Jesus. Let the power of God destroy their plans. Yes, my Lord. I command every communication between the messengers of Satan and that their evil authors to cease. Open your mouth and begin to pray now. Oh, Jesus. There is communication between the messengers of Satan and their evil authors. Whenever there is war between a country and another country, that the armies of that particular of any of the countries are always in communication with the headquarters of the defense of that country. That is where they receive instructions on what to do. That's where they receive commands on what to do. So it is in this evil kingdom. They have their headquarters in the person of the devil himself. And he is the one that is commanding them and giving them what to do. And there are also altars, evil altars, that are set up to empower the enemy. They go to the war with those altars. Don't forget the reading of yesterday. That in Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 21, and following, we see how the armies of the Philistines came to fight the people of Israel. And they, they came to war with their charms, with their amulets. They came to fight with their gods. They carried their weapon of spiritual war, their idols. They took it to a war environment, to a battlefield, to fight the children of God. That when you disconnect them from their altar, you are messing up their, their agenda. They want more power, more reinforcement, but there is no communication. They say, oh, we need, we need more armies. We need reinforcement. Their headquarters will not respond because they, don't even, they, don't, they have no communication with them. That is how to destabilize the enemy. In military warfare, I am not talking about physical warfare now. If you disconnect soldiers, armies from their source of power supply, their source of command, you have made them up. So we are disconnecting the forces of darkness, the messengers of Satan from their evil authors. Those altars where they go to, to project their evil arrows, to bring shame and crisis in the lives of people. Today, we are commanding their communication channels to cease. We are commanding their frequencies to jam in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, when you disconnect their communication, you have destabilized them. You have put confusion into them. And we are praying now and asking the mighty God of heaven and earth to destroy every communication between messengers of Satan and their evil authors. Let their authors cease in the name of Jesus. Let their authors catch fire. Let their authors catch fire. Pray now, pray now. Let their authors catch fire. Let their authors begin to burn. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. I command every communication up among the messengers of Satan to cease and never to provide any mutual aid to each other anymore. Hey, 
Hey, this is Now, listen carefully. There can be communication between a messenger of Satan or armies of the enemy and uh, their evil altar. There is also another form of communication. And that is communication among themselves, among the messengers of the devil. For example, if 100 demons have been assigned to attack a man, they will, that, the, that enemy, if the fight becomes so strong that they are not weakening that, um, that man of God, if they are not prevailing, and if the man of God is actually having an upper hand over them, the, 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 the demons can, can request for help. That's what's called reinforcement. They can, they can get reinforced. They can ask the headquarters to supply more power. So, and then remember that Jesus tells us that there are the, a demon was cut off, off out of a man, and the demons were roaring and uh, roving everywhere in the wilderness and couldn't find a place of rest. I said, okay, let's go back to my house. We have to go back to the house again. The house they mean is the house of the body of God. That is the body of, of the child of God. And on coming there and see that the house was clean, then they will go and gather seven more deadly spirits than them, more deadly. That tells you that they go and they reinforce, that reinforcement, going to gather strength, going to reinforce. Now, when you disconnect their power to communicate, you have completely destroyed that aspect. But they, they can communicate among themselves. They may not com communicate with their evil authors but they can communicate among themselves. They can begin to ask themselves, what's going on? We can't communicate with, head, with uh, headquarters. So, but now our prayer is, let, it, let the communication among them cease. When they cannot communicate among themselves, you have really messed them up. Oh, Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Now, even the authors can communicate among themselves. The evil authors can communicate. Altar, the altar can communicate with altar, especially when you are dealing with some higher spiritual levels. Occult altar can communicate with witchcraft altar. These are two different altars, but all of them are connected to satanic power. So we are praying also, we are going to pray also that their communication between their altars must be destroyed tonight. We're also going to pray that they will have no legal ground over us. For whatever thing that they are holding their grounds to be able to attack us, we are canceling them right now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. I command every communication among the messengers of Satan to cease and never to provide any mutual aid to each other anymore. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Open your mouth and pray now. This is a prayer for number 11C. I command every communication between evil authors or satanic messengers to cease and never to communicate with each other again. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. I decree that the messengers of Satan that, no, that have no legal ground anymore over me and cannot communicate again. In the name of Jesus. I plant the cross of Jesus Christ inside me and inside all my past and the future generations. And by so doing, I seize all direct communication of evil transfers between these generations, between my generations. The enemy cannot transfer evil load from my generation to another generation. I command that generation, that generational evil transfer to cease in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, Jesus. I decree that all these communications are now filtered through the most precious blood of Jesus Christ. And let the blood of Jesus Christ intercept every satanic frequency in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. I ground all their communication channels, all their television channels, all their GSM systems, all their monitoring channels. Let them begin to malfunction now. Yes, my Lord. Pray now, pray now, pray now, pray now. Set them on fire, set them on fire, set them on fire. Rake Kalaba Shereba. In the name of Jesus. Prayer point number 12. Yes, my Lord. In the name of Jesus. I command every wandering messenger of Satan and Satanic forces 
I command every wandering messenger of satanic forces. Ay, 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 ay. As many as they are that are targeting my life and my blessing, I command them to begin to melt right now. Let them melt right now like wax before the fire. According to Psalm 68, verse 2, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Every mandate against my life, every mandate against your life, let them begin to melt. Let God crush them. Let God crush them. Open your mouth, your mouth and pray now. Pray now, pray now, pray now, pray now. Let the Father of God touch you tonight. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost touch you tonight. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Let the Father of God locate you now. Cry to him, cry to him. Ask God to make up every satanic agenda against your life. Ask God to make them up. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Pray now, my people. Let the power of God locate you. Whatever you are going through, let God locate you now. Let him fight your battle now. For your God is able to do all things. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Let the power of your blood flow. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Take over, take over, take over, take over. Papa, answer me. Answer me with your blood. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Let somebody begin to vibrate in prayer. Let somebody begin to vibrate in prayer. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. The power of God is flowing now. The power of God is flowing now. Oh, Robo Shekere Baba. Jesus. My people begin to pray. My people begin to call on Jesus. Let him answer you tonight. Let him answer you with the fire. Let him answer you with the fire. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Let him answer you with the fire. Oh, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Prayer point number 13. In the name of Jesus. I command every poison the arrow of the spiritual tyrants and all the messengers of Satan targeting me and my family. Let those arrows by fire. Let those arrows by fire. Aha! Let those arrows by fire. The arrows that came from the desert that hit the family of Job. Those arrows of sin in their mission. But the arrow targeting your family shall not succeed in their mission. Any arrow targeting my family, targeting the family of the house of Jesus and many ministries, targeting any member of this family, Father, by the power of your holy name, I command those arrows to go back to the senders. I command those arrows to backfire. I command those arrows to go back and be destroyed in the camp that, that sent them. Hey, Jesus, cry to him now, cry to him now. Marco Riba Kayaba, oppression by fire. Let the arrows by fire. Let that arrow of sickness by fire. Let that arrow of prayerlessness by fire. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Let their plans by fire. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Everything that has been sent to mess me up in life. Let their plan by fire. Every hour of disorder. Let them begin to backfire. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Arrow of deformity. Be begin to backfire now. Arrows have been sent to mess up my body, to pin me down to the land of sickness. I command them to melt by fire. Oh, my Hyakara Masekeribu. Jesus. Begin to pray now, begin to pray now. Those arrows must by fire. In the name of Jesus. Hey, Jesus. The arrows shall not visit me. 
The arrows are not penetrating me because I am hidden with the Christ in God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hey, Jesus. Prayer point number 14. Satanic sacrifices at crossroads are often used to summon demon demons from north, south, east, and west against a person. Now, what I want to explain there is very important. There are people who are away that are sacrifices that are done at certain places. It's not every place that that sacrifice could be done, speaking from point of view of what happened in the demonic kingdom. There are certain places that they target, places they consider to be premium, a premium site for them to set up their evil altar. One of such places is what is called a crossroad. Crossroad is so important to them. So sometimes they come at crossroad and do their sacrifice in the night. If just a road is very lonely, it becomes a very interesting place for them. I want to share with you the confession of a of a of an awkward man who had a problem with his group. They had a sacrifice at the crossroad. And they doing the sacrifice, you must stab somebody that anybody, any person that appears in the mirror. And he said that he was given a knife to stab. When he wanted to stab, it was his mother. His own mother that gave birth to him was putting his saw in the mirror, in the in the basin with water. In the basin with water, not a mirror, basin with water. Like a crystal bow. And he could not summon the courage to stab his own mother. The mother that fed him brought him to this world. He told them, look at this my mother. They said, no, we don't want that story. Stab her right now. In a court kingdom, they want you to sacrifice something that will repay you. In a court kingdom, they understand the power of sacrifice. And they walk by sacrifice. And they know that the greatest sacrifice that could be done in the spiritual world is the human sacrifice. That's why they use human blood to do the sacrifice. So in the story I've told you now, you see that they, that occult man attended a meeting that would take place at a crossroad where they would do a sacrifice. So sacrifice at crossroads are so important to the occult kingdom. And that place is, is by the sea, by the sea. And that place is evil forests, evil rivers. And so on and so forth. A sister was talking to me that day, telling me the places that she put her legs into in the course of looking for solutions to her problems. And she was brought there in, mid, in the midnight to a place, a, a place where the road was, a, where there was a crossroad. And that was where they made a sacrifice for her. But after all those problems, we are still getting out of hand. And after some years, we began to see the face of God. There are people that they will take to the river to dead them, full naked. There are a lot of evil things that happen. The other day, a lady came for deliverance. All that she told me was how she was taken to a thick forest. Thick forest with altars and shrines, and one river is there. That's where they did what they call the spiritual beckon for her. It's all about projecting demons into her. So I'm trying to let you know that there are places that are... Who's, uh, very attractive for the demonic forces to operate. So now we are dealing with the, 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 the one of such places called the crossroad. Now when you come to the crossroad, you see the four cardinal points. Okay? You see the north, you see the south, and then you see the east, and you see the west. Okay? So when they come to the crossroad, they will begin to project demonic arrows to their targets, to the north, to the south, to the east, and to the west. Now, these four cardinal points of the earth have some mystical meanings. Those in our cult, they know how they calibrate all these spiritual coordinates. 
and use them against the people of God, most especially the church, because they don't like the church. The prayers of the church will stop them. So my friends in Christ, what we are going to do is to call upon the power of God. We are going to go to our own crossroad. <laughs> do you hear what I'm talking about? We have our own cross road, and that is the cross of Jesus. If you look at the cross of Jesus, you also see north, south, east, and west. To tell you that when Jesus spread his hand, his hands on the cross and was crucified, he gathered the north and south. He gathered the east and west into, into God. He brought us together into God. So my dear people of God, Right now, as we go to the foot of the cross, we are going to summon the occult powers to the foot of the cross to be destroyed. We invite our chief priests to the foot of the cross to be destroyed. These spirits are so deadly that they, f they fly away when they hear of Jesus Christ. What they do to people at their crossroads is what we are going to do to them now. We are going to, look, let me tell you something. You see, the case I just shared with you, that man, that former court man, I don't even know whether he had left that court, but after the time he was making his confession, um, he, he accepted to leave in that court kingdom. Anyway, my dear friends, if you look at the situation, you see that at the crossroad, they invoked the spirit of the mother, and then the mother appeared in the, in the water, in the, uh, the basin that was carrying water at the crossroad. Hell, she says. Some people have very bad dreams because they have been summoned to certain altars. But we are going to pray tonight to summon all the evil altars to the foot of the cross to be destroyed. All the marine powers, demonic spirits. Yes, my Lord. Every altar that is raised against me. Ay, 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 ay. Jesus, let that altar of darkness appear to the foot of the cross and be destroyed. I command satanic priests, let them appear at the foot of the cross and be destroyed by fire. Be destroyed by fire. Be destroyed by fire. Be destroyed by fire. Master Kayaba, be destroyed by fire. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, be destroyed by fire. In the name of Jesus, be destroyed by fire. In the name of Jesus, yes, my Lord, Jesus, Mara ba 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 ba. In the name of Jesus, yes, my Lord, the altar of Jesus Christ sacrificed on the hill of Calvary has made the palace and useless every evil altar. Ay 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 ay. He has made, made powerless every evil altar raised at crossroads to summon me by certain sacrifices. I refuse to appear to their mirrors. I refuse to appear at the crossroads in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. My Ekeribu, Sekeribu. I command them to begin to melt now. My children will not appear to the crossroads. My husband will not appear at the crossroads. That satanic crossroad is not our portion. In the name of Jesus, every spiritual tyrant summoning my spirit to any crossroad is reversed forever. In the name of Jesus, prayer for number 15. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree that every spiritual tyrant that has been chasing my life must be grounded tonight. Every spiritual tyrant, I command them to be chased from my heart, from my house, and from members of my household to the abbeys right now, and be chained forever. In the name of Jesus, yes, my Lord, Jesus, I decree that every spiritual domain of spiritual tyrants in the celestial places, in the sacred livers, 
in the sacred mountains and hills and in the evil forest. I command them to be born into pieces. I command them to be born into ashes by the consuming fire of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Oh, my Yakaya Baba. Pray now, pray now, pray now, pray now. Let the power of God manifest tonight. Father, answer me, O oh Lord. Father, answer me, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Holy Spirit, answer me. Answer me again, Papa. Answer me again. The hour has come. Father, answer me. By the power of your holy name. Jesus. My Yekete. In prayer point number 16. We are going to pray with our brother Elisha. We are going to do what he did. When the enemies surrounded the seminary where Elisha was, he prayed a simple prayer. Say, Lord, strike this army with a blindness. <laughs> Woo! The Bible says, and the Lord answered him. In 2 Kings 3, verse 18, as the enemy came down towards Elisha, he prayed to the Lord, saying, Lord, strike this army with a blindness. And all of them went blind. If you can pray in the name of Jesus, and they command every spiritual tyrant summoning your spirit to so their evil altar to go blind, I tell you they will go blind. If you decree that they will go lame, or deaf, or mute, or dumb, so shall it be, in the name of Jesus. Aha! Jesus! Can somebody begin to pray now? Master Kaya Baba Jesus! Oh, Elijah, to bring your fire down. Send them power, also send them rain. Do hear the sick, raise the dead, and glorify your name. Lord, I want to be another Elijah here. God, send another Elijah to bring your power down. Send down fire, also send down rain. To heal the sick, raise the dead, and glorify your name. Lord, I want to be another Elijah, yeah. God, send down another Elijah. To bring your power down, send down fire, also send down rain. To heal the sick, raise the dead, and glorify your name. Lord, I want to be another Elijah, yeah. Amen. Jesus, and that brings us to prayer for number 17. By the power of the Most High God, who defeated you, Satan, and triumphed over you on the gibbet of the cross on Calvary, I summon you and your spirits to fly from the north, south, east, and west, to the foot of the cross right now for eternal damnation, for eternal destruction in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. My dear people of God, whatever place you are, begin to pray aggressively, pouring upon the power of the cross, the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whose altar is moving now, whose altar has become a weapon. Against the forces of darkness as we pray. Let the power of Christ Jesus 
the power of the cross begin to cripple all the satanic forces in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. I am by invite you to pray for number 17A and following. Yes, my Lord. We pray aggressively at this point that we are summoning all the satanic agents, all the powers of darkness, we summon them to the foot of the cross for total destruction. And we command them in the name of Jesus to be bound eternally in the name of Jesus. We command them to be disgraced and be, de be destroyed and never to rise again in the name of Jesus Christ. We command them to be rendered impotent in the name of Jesus Christ. We command them to begin to vomit all our blessings that have been swallowed in the name of Jesus Christ. We command them to release our blessings that have been encaged or entrapped for ages in the name of Jesus Christ. We command them to begin to receive the hammer of God, to smash them into pieces. Let the hammer of the Almighty God smash their heads in the name of Jesus. Let the altar of Jesus, the hammer of Jesus, begin to hammer the altars and they smash the altars into dust in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, let the altars and the stones that we are used to build the altar begin to turn into pebbles as the hammer of Jeremiah 23, verse 29 is hammering them now. For there the Bible says, is my word not like a hammer that is smashing the rocks into pieces. And now every rock that is used to set up these altars, the word of God is against you now. The word of God is turning to a hammer. So I'm going you into pieces now. So that you can no more function again. So that there shall be no sacrifice for you again. Oh, Jesus. Let the thunder of God smite all the evil authors into irreparable pieces. And they smite their strongholds. Smite their evil men and women. Smite their agents of darkness. I give them tonight. Mara Bako Reva Shereba. Jesus. Let the power of God locate somebody now. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost begin to locate you now. Receive the power of Jesus. Let the power of Jesus enter into you, child of God. And use this prayer to activate you with the fire. And if it make you a moving altar. Do you know you're a moving altar, child of God? Oh, Jesus, may God activate you with the fire in the name of Jesus. As we are summoning the enemy to the altar of Jesus for total destruction, we are commanding them to dry up all the satanic rivers. We command them to dry up all the evil rivers. Let them dry up right now in the name of Jesus. Let them wither now. We command them to wither. Let their powers wither in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Pray, my people, pray, my people. Let the blood of Jesus Christ, brought you forth from the cross of Jesus, begin to destroy every tyrant spirit that has come out of my life and family and ministry in the name of Jesus. Oh, put them back and pray aggressively. Hey, Jesus. I possess my possessions that have been taken away from me by these spiritual elements in the name of Jesus. I withdraw my glory and my breakthroughs from evil authors in the name of Jesus. Every power that is troubling my breakthrough, stopping my breakthrough, blocking my breakthrough, today by the blood of Jesus Christ, that is gotten forth from the altar of Jesus, be consumed by fire. Be consumed by fire. And I'm withdrawing my glory. So that from today, my glory shall be visible. My star shall be visible. In the name of Jesus. Every dark element, every dark cloud covering my glory, covering my destiny, I command them to melt completely. In the name of Jesus Christ. I withdraw my blessings with her by these spiritual tyrants. My blessings shall no more be in their hands anymore. In the name of Jesus, 
Begin to talk to him now. Begin to talk to him now. Talk to God about your blessings. Maybe there are your blessings that are kept or tied to the evil altar. Through this prayer, may God retrieve those blessings for you. May God retrieve your blessings for you. Your story must change. My story must change for good. In the name of Jesus. My time of testimony has come. Oh, Jesus. Oh, put them out of prayer. Call on Jesus. For those who call upon his name shall be saved. Call on his name tonight. As you are calling on his name, he is stepping into your situation. He is fighting your battle now. Yes, my Lord. Yes. Papa, take over. Holy Ghost, take over. Yes. King of glory, take over. Change the mess I'm going through. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, oh, Jesus. Lord, you deliver for the silence. My God, I deliver for the silence. You will surely deliver me. God, you deliver for the silence. Daddy, you deliver for the silence. My God, I deliver all the silence. You will surely deliver, Lord. Lord, you deliver all the silence. Lord, you deliver all the silence. My God, I deliver all the silence. You will surely deliver us. Amen. Oh, God will surely deliver his people because salvation cometh from his, his name. People of God, as we come to prayer for number 18, we are aware of satanic aspects. And one of them is altar. Evil altar is an asset in the hands of the devil. From there, that they project arrows against God's people. And at there, they tie people's destinies. Amen. So we are going to arrest every asset of the tyrant. And we'll summon their assets to the altar of God for destruction. That was what happened to the evil asset of King Jeroboam when he projected the arrow to hit the man of God. The arrow backfired, and the result was that the altar of Jeroboam was burnt into pieces. I would say that it turned into dust, into ashes. The power of God destroyed that evil altar. <laughs> if you read the first Kings chapter 13, verse 4 to 5, you will see the story there. Amen. In other words, the asset of King Jeroboam was destroyed. The asset. The asset, the asset of King Jeroboam was the altar. Any power fighting you must fight you with an asset. Without the asset, how can they fight you? And so we are commanding those assets, their temples, their altars, their covens. Their chance to appear at the altar of Calvary for total destruction. Can you pray alongside with me now? Prayer point number 18. Whatever place you are, begin to summon every asset of the tyrant to the altar of Jesus Christ of Nazareth for total destruction. And so I summon to the altar of Calvary and set on fire every stronghold, every shrine and temple. 
every evil author and wizard, witches, and witch, witchcraft covers, and all the attempts and demonic priests and deity that have been used against me. I summon all of them to the altar of Jesus for total arrest in the name of Jesus. I destroy every satanic power representing me from the evil altar in the name of Jesus. I destroy evil, every evil altar speaking death over my life. I cancel them now. Every evil altar speaking shame into my life, speaking step back into my life. I command them to go back to the senders in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, Jesus. Prayer point number 19. Now, in this prayer point number 19, my people of God, we are going to summon to the altar of God, the altar of Jesus, and we pray for the repentance of the human servants of Satan. There are, Satan has human agents. Like all these occult, occultists. Those occult people, some of them could have been bishops. Some of them could have been evangelists. But the devil took over them. So we are going to pray that today, let God forgive them and make them to repent. Maybe you have an uncle or a cousin or a sibling that is in our court. Our prayer is not that they will die. Our prayer is that God makes them to repent. That is our prayer. But for the kingdom of darkness, you see, remember, when we're talking about enemies, we don't refer to human beings so. Please. We refer to the spirits. The spirit. Let's say that somebody is tormenting you, fighting you, and messing you up, and uh, going to a court kingdom to get out and fight you. That person is not, is not really your true enemy. Your true enemy is the power that is in that person, the spirit that is operating through that person. That is your true enemy. So when we are praying against the enemies, we don't talk literally. It is meant to be the spirit that is behind all this mess that's going on. Praise the Lord. So we're extending the arm of love to even the occultists that they repent. We're praying that God will touch their heart through the prayer. And so the prayer point number 19 is inviting us to pray for those that we know and those that we don't know that are in this occult. That's one, the mother died long ago, but the occult group told him not to bury the mother. And uh, for years now, the mother is in the mortuary because their group told them not to bury his mother. So such a people were praying that they be arrested and let God make make them instruments in his hand. Look at Paul. Paul was terrorizing Christians. May God arrested him. So my prayer in Christ, as we are at the altar of Jesus, hey, we are praying now for the repentance of human servants of Satan. Those that are in occultism, who are occultists, who are wizards and witches, who are members of satanic sects, and the esoteric others who are members of voodoo and who practice such evil powers, those who are juju practitioners, and so on and so forth. We are summoning all of them, whatever place they are, to appear to the foot of the cross and let the power of the cross strip them of their evil powers and make them to repent. If you know the names of them, you may mention the names now. And ask God and summon Mr. A and summon Occultist B to the altar of God for God to strip him of his power and for God to make him to repent in the name of Jesus. Let the power of God arrest them tonight. Arrest them tonight. Let the members of Occultism and witches and wizards and the practitioners of voodoo and the juju and the other esoteric orders and satanic sects let all of them begin to lose their membership from today. Let them begin to lose their membership today in the name of Jesus. As they are becoming depopulated, let the church become populated in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Rabo Shekere Bababa. Father, arrest them, Lord. Arrest them, Lord. In the name of Jesus. 
Father, let them, Lord, let their courses never work again in my life. Whatever they have projected against my life, against my father, let it not work again. It's us. Father, arise, Holy Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It is us. Prayer point number 20. I refuse to be a toy in the hands of the spiritual tyrant. I refuse to be a toy in the hands of the spiritual tyrant. See, let me tell you something. How do you handle a toy? Now, let's say you have a, to a your child has a toy. The child will play with the toy. You see that? When you're a toy in the hands of the devil, he will play with you. Whatever thing he wants, that's what will happen. You want to go for an interview. He doesn't want you to go. So he'll make you to take a wrong exit. And, and the, the exit will have a traffic problem. And you won't come out of it. And, and the interview is over. The other young man prepared for exam. This happened before my face. Prepared for exam, go to hall. My one of my students. He came. As I was, I was sharing paper, I didn't see him again. I thought he went to the restroom to hear. It's coming back. He didn't come back again. The time was over. I was calling him to find out where he was, but I had his number. He wasn't picking. In fact, the number was going for smell. Okay? The, the moment the exam was over, that was when the, the, ring, the phone began to ring. I said, come to my office. I want to see you. He came. I said, well, did you write to this exam? He said, no, sir. Why? He was looking at me. He said, I don't know what came upon me. I, something told me to get up and leave the hall. And I followed that thing. Can you imagine that? Preparing for the whole, for a course for the whole semester. You have paid the school fees, everything, made all the sacrifices, all the homework, projects we are done. Now, to write the exam, you have come to the exam, you are prepared, you have read the night. But now I need a final stage for you to either make an A or B or C or whatever. And now the spirit came and hijacked him, told him to stand up. I don't know what you talking. He said, brother, uh, sir, the, somebody just came and said, get up. I just got up. I don't know myself again. I followed him. Toy. <laughs> Toy. Do you know, I think I shared it with you some time ago, a story of a, 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 a pathetic story of a young, a young lady. Actually, this story I want to share, and I shared it in the Rosary of Liberation. If you listen to the Rosary of Liberation, I shared that story about four years ago. And uh, that, that this particular sister was having issues with marriage. Nothing was working. Men were coming, but nothing will end up in marriage. Something will happen somehow, and there will no marriage again. And it will end up in sorry. So he, she got frustrated. She got very, very frustrated. So she told uh, one of my friends who is a priest, and the by God's grace, the priest understands the spiritual warfare. So after telling the priest about the situation, so the priest told her, you know what? Yeah, well, well, I'm going to be in prayer with you. So prayed for her and all that. Now, some weeks later, a young man came from Germany and indicated interest in marrying her. And so uh, she took the matter to the priest. And uh, the priest prayed and said, no problem. Uh, God will help you and see, make sure that things goes well now. But, you know, because of several disappointments over years, Men coming to propose marriage was no more enticing her again. It was no more something of interest. So in her mind, well, <laughs> this will, be, will see end like other ones. But this one continue, progressed at, at an advanced level. And there were traditional wedding, everything went fine. And then there was a white wedding. So you know when it, everything got to the point of the day of wedding, that means that the lady had succeeded, right? But guess what happened? The, on the day of the wedding, the, meanwhile, the man, the, 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 the bridegroom, uh, because of traffic in the city, he had to stay in a hotel opposite to the, almost opposite to the church so that there was no traffic problem. So he himself and his best man were in the same hotel. So it would be a matter of in the morning, you know, dressing up and moving to the church. Do you know that at, but when it was morning, the, the best man got up and uh, talking with uh, the, the, the guy who was the wait, 
And then all of a sudden, the other one, I forgot something in the car. And the forgetting something in the car will just mean coming down from upstairs and going to the car to pick that thing. Do you know that the best man could not see this, this man again? He couldn't see his friend again. When well, I'm talking about not seeing his friend again, he couldn't see his friend, his friend again. For three days, nobody saw him. Meanwhile, people were in the church waiting. Tension was in the church. People were calling his number. You can't get him. It was even ringing. Nobody knew what had gone wrong. How can people come from different parts of the country, some flew in from overseas for this wedding of this our sister? And the friends of the man came out from overseas and all that. And they, they just went so awkward like this. Who could console such a lady? So the priest told me that, look, no, brother, you can't believe what happened. I was just coming out from Paris house. And I saw this lady wearing her wedding gown, shouting, screaming, and running towards him. And behind her was the, the chibras maid who was carrying the veil. Yeah, okay. But then he said that he saw a, another person. He, he, he saw a, a woman carrying a, a chicken, a live chicken, and hitting her on the head, saying, you will never get married. Why? You will never get married. Why? You will never get married. Just hitting her. Then he, he now the same properly and saw that this was the vision she, he was seeing, that, that even though that the lady, uh, the bride, and the children's maid um, were, were physical, but the third person was not physical. That was a spiritual person that was scourging her that she would never get married. Long story short, the lady threw herself on the ground. I was crying. I said, look, it's better for me to die than to life, and this will happen. So she now was taken to the chapel, and father began to pray for her. Now, for three days, nobody saw that man. Can you imagine the confusion? And uh, it was on the third day that the man came back and began to talk about his story. That when he went down to the car to pick what he forgot, something entered into him and told him, start this car, move. He started the car, boom, 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 moved. Jam, entered the road. Hit, hit Toto, kept driving endlessly. Heading, driving. This was happening somewhere in Arambra State, and you know what happened? He drove hours, came to Anisha, crossed the head bridge. Those of you who are familiar with uh, the Nigerian territory around that area, and uh, kept moving, driving to Lagos. Heading, he had already crossed Benin. Can you imagine that? Who we are and put off the phone so that nobody will reach him. Can you imagine that kind of manipulation? Kept driving until the gas in the car finished. And he got stuck in the those thick forests that that you see between Lagos and Benin. That way he got stuck. And he was trapped in the in that place uh, for three days. It was after the it was the third day that he came back to his senses. And they managed to get money from people, put gas in the car and turn back. He was still having some of his uh, wedding stuff there. And then by the time he came back, his people gathered him and took him to somewhere to ask him what, what entered into his mind. Are you mad? By the time he finished the story, he's talking his story. It was clear something beyond normal happened. You know why I say this story? That guy was a toy in the hands of the devil. It's not every person that devil can recognize of them. Devil has power, not in doubt. But I'm telling you, they, it doesn't, they don't have power over everybody. No. So I am praying for you. You shall not be a toy in the hand of the devil. For a devil to dictate for you where, where to be, what to do, what not to do. We cancel that now. We cancel that now. We cancel that now. In the name of Jesus, we cancel that now. I refuse to be a toy in the hands of the devil. I refuse to appear in a place of spiritual judgment. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to appear in a place of spiritual condemnation. In the name of Jesus. I decree that my spirit shall not appear in demonic mirrors in the name of Jesus. I decree that my spirit shall not be nailed down to stagnation in the name of Jesus. 
I decree that my spirit shall not appear in demonic altars and not in demonic temples in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree that my spirit shall not appear in satanic courts and shall not be engaged in, with a demonic spouse in the name of Jesus. I decree in the name of Jesus that my spirit shall not eat the bread of sorrows and shall not drink the water of bitterness in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree tonight that my spirit shall not appear before any deity in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree that from today, my spirit will have no relationship or covenant with spirit man or spirit woman in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, it's yours. Oh, put your mouth and pray now. Pray now, pray now, pray now, pray now, pray now. Let the Father of God answer you. Let God answer you. Any engagement ring that somebody is wearing in the spiritual ring, I set that ring on fire. I set that ring on fire. I set that ring on fire. Hey, I command that ring, that engagement ring, that ring of satanic covenant, that ring of satanic wedding. I set the ring of fire in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Pray now, pray now, pray now, pray now. Yes, my Lord. Pray upon number 21. Deliver me, O Lord. From all the spiritual tyrants and their forces, trying to get me into mess in life, trying to package nightmares into my dreams. Father, deliver me from their hands, deliver me from their schemes, deliver me from spirit of nightmares. In the name of Jesus, yes, my Lord, it's ours. Pray now, pray now, pray now, pray now. Maraba korobo shekereba. Lord Jesus Christ, my flesh of power in my life. I now bring us to prayer for number 22. Lord Jesus Christ, I have faith in your unfailing power to bless me with grace to walk out with the answers to my prayers. I must walk out with answers to my prayers. Aha! This prayer is ending up with me having victory. I am walking out with the answers to my prayers. Because God has answered my prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, you are an awesome God. We give you glory tonight. We give you worship tonight. Blessed be your name. Thank you for what you have done tonight. We give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, my Lord. You are an awesome God. We thank you with some 100. We thank you with some 136. Father, be glorified tonight. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen and amen. Prayer point number 17, or rather page 17. Sorry about that. St. Michael the Archangel prayer. One, two, three, go. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sinners of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking for the ruin of souls. Amen. The page 18. The Anima Christi prayer. That is soul of Christ. One, two, three, go. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, Save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, sent in me. Oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Never let me be separated from you again, Papa. From the evil one, protect me. And the hour of my death, call me and bid me to come close to you, O Lord, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen and amen. Begin to thank him now. Begin to appreciate him for what he has done tonight. Begin to say thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Just appreciate him, appreciate him. 
He has blessed you tonight. He has favored you tonight. I will lift him higher. Jehovah, I will lift you higher. You have given me victory. I will lift you higher. You have given me victory. I will lift you higher. You have given me victory. I will lift you higher. Jehovah has given us victory. We will lift him higher, higher, higher. We will lift him higher. You have given us victory. We will lift you higher. Amen. Father, we lift you higher and higher and higher because you are worthy to receive our thanksgiving. Blessed be your name, Papa. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We cover the prayer with the blood of Jesus. All the instruments that God has used this night to bless us. We are covering all of them with the mighty power of the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. The Gethsemane hour component of this prayer that will taking place in the Mary prayer line. We are covering with the blood of Jesus. We cover the leaders with the blood of Jesus. And may God manifest his presence among his people tonight as we gather for the Gethsemane hour session in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we also thank you for today's fasting and prayers. You have done it, Father. And we are here to say thank you. And we are commending into your hands tomorrow's fasting and prayers. May all these patterns be pleased.